guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I just had my exams and I finished them, so I immediately wanted to make a video again because it's been such a long time and I miss YouTube, but I wanted to come back with a really awesome video, so I made this tag. You already saw it in the title, that's why you probably clicked on the video, but I'm so excited about this because it is the at Sharon Divide book tag. It's his new album, the Divide album, and I've been obsessed with it. Like, I feel the rest of the world. It's such a good album. I've never really listened that much to Ad Sheeran before. Like, of course, I knew about a lot of his songs, but never have I ever listened to his songs this much before. They're amazing. So I wanted to make a book tag inspired by the songs. So let's get on with it. By the way, I will leave a couple of people that I will be tagging in the description down below. But if you wanna do this video as well, just feel free to do it. I basically, I will just tag you all to do this because I wanna see other people's responses to the sort of like questions that I made for these songs. So I didn't do all of his songs because that would be just a little bit too much. So I took eight of the songs on his album. These are sort of my favorite. Not all of them are like my top favorites, but definitely a couple of them. So the first one is Shape of You. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. So I also put like a little lyric there from the song. The question is the most beautiful book you own. You just cannot stop looking at it. So for this one, I've shown this book so many times to you guys and I've told you that this is my favorite book cover ever like a million times already, but it is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I just cannot stop looking at this cover. Oh my God, the lighting is just, it's messing with the lighting. I just cannot stop looking at this cover because of the golden details and uh, blue is also my favorite color ever. And it's just, it also feels so nice. And I love this cover so much. I could just stare at it the whole day and still be fascinated by it, so. Yeah, this one. Then we have Castle on the Hill, which is one of my favorites. I love this one so very much. And then the song, I was younger then, take me back to when I found my heart and broke it here. A book that gives you all the nostalgic feelings. So for this one, I chose The Princess Diaries, but I think it's Mac Cabot, I don't know. I have read the first three books in this series when I was around 10, because I got a really big like mash up of the three books for my birthday from my aunt and I really loved them. I just didn't continue on with the series by then, but I have forgotten the story. But whenever I hear The Princess Diaries, I always think of the time when I was 11 and just reading all of these books like back after one another and I just loved it so very much. Then dive, let me know the truth before I'll dive right into you. So for this one, I have once you dived into the story of this book, you just couldn't put it down. So. For this one, I actually have two books, but I feel like this one fits it just a tad bit more, and that is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Everyone here on booktube, everyone in the planet maybe even has read this book, but I still haven't. I still haven't finished the whole series. I've only read City of Bones, but I've been meaning to continue on with City of Ashes and City of Glass because I, I own them and I have them on my bookshelves. I started this story and I read the first 100 pages in one day and that doesn't really happen with me that often that I read 100 pages in a day because I have a very slow reading pace. I read around like 30 to 40 pages an hour which is I think quite slow but once I started this story I just couldn't stop it and it's quite a big book. It's like 500 and something pages I think. Yeah, it's like just over 500 pages and I read this within like five days. So this is one of the quickest books that I've read. Yeah. And then my second pick would be A Court of Miss and Fury by Sarah J. Maas, just because I feel like everyone has had that with this book. It is such a big, ginormous book. It's like 600, I believe it's around 600 pages. Yeah, it is just over 600 pages, but I didn't finish it as quickly as City of Bones, so that's why this would be my second choice. I finished this and I think about one or two weeks, so still not that super duper quick, but this is fantasy, so it always takes a lot of effort for me to read this and go through with it, but it was so addicting. I couldn't stop it, and it's it's my bay. I love it so much. Cannot wait for A Court of Wings and Ruin, and I really want to reread this one before that, so <laughs> good luck, Sabine. Yeah, I'm saying that to myself. Then I have Perfect, uh, I Found the Love for Me, a book with the perfect love story. So for this one, I chose a book that I don't own. I don't have a physical copy of it, but it's the first Colleen Hoover book that I read, and that is Maybe Someday. I was captivated by this story. Her writing style is so easy to read through, and this romance is just 
one of the cutest, one of the best. I love it so very much and I really need to get a physical copy of the book now that I'm thinking about it because it's one of my favorites. Still my number one Colleen Hoover book, but just gave me all the feels. Okay, so now I have my favorite song of the entire album, which is New Man, and I can even rap to it. Like, I know all the words. I'm very, very proud of myself. I don't want to know about your new man, and for this one I have uh, pick a new release that you're not interested in. You don't want to know anything about this book. So for this new release that I don't want to know anything about, I picked King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. So the thing is, I read Red Queen last year in January, and I quite enjoyed it and I really like was kind of surprised because everyone was saying that it's just so typical YA dystopian and it's not that special but I quite enjoyed it and I didn't see the plot twist coming plus the paperback is super duper floppy which I really like but it has nothing to do with the book. I read this right before the second one came out which is called... what's the second one called? I have absolutely no clue. Glass Sword. Glassword. Okay, so I read this right before Glassword came out with the intention of like, okay, if I really enjoy this, I can definitely just immediately continue with Glassword, but I eventually never picked it up, not planning to, don't want to read it, and um, King's Cage is the third book in the series that just came out, so I'm just completely not interested in this series anymore. Then I have this really sad song and I'm not usually a really big fan of sad songs but this one is really touchy and that is Supermarket Flowers, Oh I'm in Pieces, It's Tearing Me Up. For this one you need to pick a book that made you cry for days. I just cannot pick another book which I cried for days about than this one. It's really obvious but I don't have another book with which I cried this much, and that is Harry Potter and the Half-Love Prince by J.K. Rowling. And we all know why, I'm not gonna say why, because there are still a couple of people who haven't read the Harry Potter series. I'm still one of the people who haven't finished reading the Harry Potter series, I still need to read the seventh one. But this one made me cry so much, I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop crying. I was reading it and I knew that it was gonna happen and I just emotions. Question number seven is what do I know? Also one of my favorites. It's like my number two. Uh, while I'll be sitting here with a song that I wrote saying love could change the world in a moment, but what do I know? For this one I have the question, if everyone would read this book it would change the world for the better. I chose The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is not necessarily the usual book that you would read. It is a poetry collection and it made me cry. It made me feel all the feels and I never thought that I would say that because I've never read poetry before but uh, I and five other people host the read a theme readathon and um, we picked the theme poetry. This book was obviously one of the poetry things that I wanted to read because it's so popular. A ton of people have read it and raved about it and it made me really emotional. I cried but it was really good and I love the poem. I think that if everyone would read this book, people would understand mental illness a bit better and that could definitely change the world for the better. And finally, also this song makes me just so happy, is Barcelona. We're going somewhere where the sun is shining bright. Pick a book which gave you ultimate summer vibes. So for this one, I basically have the two books by Morgan Matson that I've read. So they are Since You've Been Gone and Amy and Roger's Epic Detour. I'm holding this book in like such an inconvenient way. That's better. Since You've Been Gone, I read this one back when it just came out in 2014, I believe, the summer of 2014, which is almost three years ago, which blows my mind every time that I think that it's already like three years ago. Back then, I did not have a booktube channel, but everyone was talking about this and it's amazing. The only thing that I really regret is that I bought the paperback. I really want to get the hardcover still, so. Yeah, so this is such a summary book. It's about Emily and her best friend Sloan disappears, but Sloan has left Emily a list of I believe 13 things that she has to do. And then after she's done those things, Emily believes that she can find Sloan back in some sort of way. But this book I believe has like around 13 chapters. So with each chapter, she crosses off a thing of the list. So much fun and I really want to reread this again and it's one of my favorite contemporaries. And then I read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour last year. So good, so much fun. You're following Amy who has lost her dad because she was with her dad in a car crash and he died. And now Amy is moving to the other side of the country and Roger, her next door neighbor, is helping her out to get her car from the other side of the USA to the other side of the USA because she's kind of afraid of driving right now because of their car crash and you have 
playlist and pictures and you cannot see it. I'm just going right past it all. So here you have like a hotel ticket thing. Then here you have pictures and playlists. So much fun. Definitely recommend it to everyone who loves contemporary books and who wants to read a book with a ton of summer vibes. This just made me want to go on a road trip myself, even though I'm not the biggest fan of road trips. It just made me feel really good about them. I don't know. So those were the eight songs and eight questions that I came up with surrounding Ed Sheeran's Divide album. Love it so much. I don't know what that was because it wasn't shaped like a heart, but I meant to do a heart shape. Let me know in the comments down below if you have listened to all of Ed Sheeran's songs and which ones are your favorite. Mine are New Man, What Do I Know, and Barcelona. They just make me so happy and just love them. And also, if you guys want to do this tag, feel free to do it. I would love to see your answers to these songs and questions that I came up with. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!